Did you miss me? That's right. Welcome back. It's your boy, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, again with Rudy's Rants. You thought you got rid of me for a day, but my God, the gift that keeps on giving are the idiots that keep talking smack about Caitlin Clark. But before we jump into the newest idiot of the day, we will discuss what you need to do, and that is subscribe now. We are 25 subs away from 1,000, so we thank you for your continued support. This is a milestone for us, so help us get there. Get us to 1,000 subscriptions today, all right? And also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and on X at Come On Now Pod. Let's get right into the new idiot of the day. That would be the one, the only ESPN analyst, Carolyn Peck. I mean, just when you think the stupid commentary from the people that call themselves basketball intellects would end with Monica McNobody, a.k.a. Monica McNutt, who said last week that she would give Angel Reese Rookie of the Year because Chicago has a better record. Well, I wonder what she's doing today. Is she giving the award now to Caitlin Clark since Indiana now has the better record? Yeah, that one didn't work out too well, did it, Monica? You, 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 you really shot yourself in the foot with that nonsense. So I hope to see you on, you know, one of your, you know, whether it's Get Up or First Take or one of these shows and, and say today now Caitlin Clark is your Rookie of the Year because they have a better record. But anyhow. Carolyn Peck now, she says, don't even, forget about let me tell you, just watch the video. (laughs) Great dialogue. Um, A big question. If you had to log your vote today, who would your rookie of the year be in the WNBA? I mean, it is a thin, thin line. It's, It's really tight. But when you look at where the teams are, And I also went a little deeper, and I looked at plus minus, and I also look at net rating. And when you look at that, Angel Reese has to get the nod. Now, I know it's not a popular popular, uh, position to take because Angel Reese has to do the dirty work. I have said it's not sexy to have to battle and rebound inside and where you've got to do the blue-collar work. But this is a player that has come in as a rookie and is putting up grown woman numbers, 12 double doubles in a row i mean in one season so when you see a young woman come in like that and do that i I would have to give the nod with her efficiency rating and also plus minus is she using plus minus to determine the rookie of the year net rating to determine rookie of the year is she using team stats to determine the rookie of the year? Is this where she's going? Is she watching the game? The dirty work that Angel Reese does? Yeah, she does dirty work. She's grimy. She's gritty. She plays hard. She plays with tremendous effort. Rebounding is an effort, 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 effort deal. That's what it is. It is not a skill deal. Not when you're in the post. And you know who she has next to her right now, which people are ignoring so rather easily? Camila Cardoso, who's 6'7", 240 pounds. So there's a tree right next to her who takes up space, which is now allowing Reese to get more rebounds because Reese was grabbing lots of rebounds early in the season, but not like this. And it was because Camila Cardoso was sitting on the, was not playing. She was injured early on this season. So now she's on the court. And what's happening? Reese is dominating glass because Cardoso's taking up more bodies. Not to mention they're playing volleyball back and forth to each other, but that's another story for another day. Angel Reese is being guarded 94 feet when she doesn't have the ball. I'm sorry, that's a, that's a Angel Reese? I mean, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is being guarded 94 feet when she doesn't have the ball. She's being guarded without the ball. 
40 feet from the rim. She's being doubled and crashed and blitzed on every pick and roll. She is the game plan for the opposing team. I don't give a shit what a PER says or a, or a, or a, or a net rating says or a plus minus says. The Chicago Sky have more talent, yet they have a worse record right now. But they have more talent around Angel Reese. Kennedy Carter right now would be, would be Indiana's second best player. Have you been watching Kennedy Carter in action? That woman's that woman is damn good. If she if she keeps her head on straight and 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 Teresa Witherspoon continues to keep her going in the right direction, she can she's going to be a star. <clears throat> she's the best player on that team. Caitlin Clark is facilitating, running, doing everything for that for the Indiana Fever. She's rebounding. She's dishing the ball. She's scoring. She's in the top 20 in six categories in the league. Only three players are in that same situation. She just busted out the first triple-double for a rookie in WNBA history, and you're going to sit here and tell me now that the reason you would take Angel Reese is because of the plus-minus? Have you been watching the games? Indiana Fever played terrible, terrible defense, and in there they lost – what, seven of their first eight games? They were, what, one and seven after eight? And since then, they're eight and... Eight and, eight and six? They're, eight, they're nine and 13 now. So they were one and seven after eight, and now they're eight and six since then? That is a meteoric change, man. When they finally got a chance to practice, things started changing. I don't think their coaching got better. I think the women on the team with Clark got more used to her passing and her ability to hit them on a dime and create layups for them. Just watch what they did versus the Liberty this past weekend. Kaylin Clark is creating everything for that team. She's, she's literally half their offense between points and assists virtually every game. And she's rebounding too. She's the leading rebounder for all guards in the WNBA. She has four double-digit rebounding games and nine with over seven rebounds. And you're sitting here talking about plus minus? My God, the congregation at ESPN is mind-blowing. At the very least, could an ESPN make this some level of balanced? Is there any level of balance in WNBA, WNBA coverage? When it comes to analysts and experts, I can listen to Lexi Brown on Gil's Arena say Caitlin Clark's the rookie of the year. As much as she wants to give it to Angel Reese, she knows the rookie of the year is Caitlin Clark right now, if the season ended today. We can't speak for the next 20 games, but we can say right now. But yet, McNutt, Drea Carter, Shini Agumuke, now you got uh, Carolyn Peck. And I know there's more that I'm forgetting right now. But they all speak the same language. They all are cheerleading Angel Reese. This isn't even about an, being objective. This is a cheerleading job. They don't, they, they're ignoring all the intricacies of basketball. They're supposed to be experts. They're supposed to be experts. And yet we're sitting here and, and, and talking about plus minus? What the hell is next? The size of their shoe? Their jersey size? Their bra size? I mean, what are we talking about? How long their hair is? Like, what, are we just going to make up new criteria for how you're deciding that someone who is actually better in four of the six categories than injuries and tied for the, the, the fifth of the six? Like, this isn't even a, this isn't a conversation. This isn't even. I, I keep saying this is this is not a race. This is a wipeout. People might disagree with me because of what's being said and spewed on ESPN. Thank God the ESPN pundits are not the actual sports writers who vote on the WNBA Rookie of the Year. I've read articles where they're sitting here talking about 
Clark is inefficient at 39% plus shooting. She's shooting majority threes. She shoots almost 50% on two-point shots. Angel Reese shoots 40% on two-point shots. Who's the six-foot-three player? Who's the guard? So the guard is shooting 50, almost 50% from two-point range, but the, the big is shooting 40%, 41%. And you're going to sit here and not, and you're going to ignore these things? These are the nuances of basketball. Oh, the turnovers. Here we go, the turnover argument again. Go back to go back and watch these damn games. At some point this year, I'm going to watch every game again, and I'm going to count every drop pass from every player on the Indiana Fever. And I'm going to find out what the real turnover number is. Because the real turnover number is not what it is right now. Not to mention in the last couple of games, she's a two to three to one assist to turnover ratio. She has the ball in her hands the entire freaking game. She's a daredevil. Yeah, she takes chances, and sometimes she pays for those chances. But more often than not, they can make if they make layups and they catch the ball, it's a layup. Instead of you know the drop passes have have stopped have, have lessened. They're not they're they're not dropping as many passes, which is a great thing to see. And I think it's a large part because of practice. They're getting used to her. But early on, that number was completely bloated by drop passes. Credited Caitlin Clark. Sorry if you hear me crying in the background. I have a newborn son, and he is uh, a little fussy at the sec at this moment. But like, what are we talking about, man? I mean, enough already. What's who's the next pundit that's going to come out? And 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 criticize, um, because this is literally what it is. Because they're diminishing, they constantly keep diminishing these these, these successes. The first ever triple double by a rookie. She also has how many now double doubles as a rookie? I think three. She's a guard, and she has them via points and assists. She has three straight double doubles with points and assists. That's harder to do than points and rebounds. It just is. For Christ's sakes, man, the, 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 the growing congregation of Caitlin Clark, hate, the hate brigade, man, it gets bigger every single day. I'd like to see ESPN balance out this coverage and put some people that actually seem to like Caitlin Clark a little bit on their broadcast because all of them are important now because of Caitlin Clark's, the attention Caitlin Clark's brought them because they were all a bunch of nobodies that nobody cared about just a year ago. Nobody cared about these people. Nobody watched this sport. 95,000 voters votes was the most votes for any player in the WNBA last year for the All-Star game. That was Asia Wilson. Caitlin Clark drew over 700,000 votes. There was a 700% increase in voters, which also helped Asia Wilson because she got like 600,000 plus votes this year. Enough already. You don't make sense. And you're making up new and improved reasons for why. Caitlin Clark didn't have a 10, 10, 10 triple double. She went 19, 13, and 12. Holy crap. And the Indiana Fever have a better record today. So Monica McNutt, I hope you're jumping on for this one. But plus minus, you remember the plus minus for Rudy Gobert in the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Denver Nuggets series? Rudy Gobert for the five starters for the Minnesota Timberwolves had the best plus minus of anyone on that team, of, on the starters for the Minnesota Timberwolves. While everyone was crucifying him saying he couldn't guard Joker, he, he was getting crushed by Joker, all this crap about Joker, Joker, Joker. And the guy who had the best plus minus in that series for the Minnesota Timberwolves starters was Rudy Gobert. But he was getting crucified by national media every single day for how he was getting crushed by Nikola Jokic, who crushes everybody. But now this is how we're determining an individual award based on a team stat. This is, a, this is an individual award. I wonder what Victor Wembayama's 
plus minus was this year for the San Antonio Spurs. Let me see if I can find this out real fast because I want to it, it can't be good. It, it, it can't be good because they were 22 and 60. This is another outrageous approach. Come on, pull it up here, Internet. Come on, let's go. Victor Wambayama plus minus this year was minus 142. He was the rookie of the year. Chet Holmgren, who finished second, was on the number one team in the West. Second best record in the, in the NBA. And we're using plus minus? I guarantee you Chet Holmgren's is a plus a lot. Let's see what Chet Holmgren's is. Chet Holmgren plus minus. Oh, his was plus 422. So I guess Carolyn Peck would give Chet Holmgren the rookie of the year in the NBA this year. Chet Holmgren will be the rookie of the year. So Monica McNutt should have given Chet Holmgren the rookie of the year. And now it's Carolyn Peck is giving Chet Holmgren rookie of the year in, in the NBA. The, the lunacy of these women, it, it's just like, it's incredible. It's incredible. They hate her because they ain't her. That's going to be my new slogan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make shirts on this thing. They hate her because they because they ain't her. I'm going to put a picture of Caitlin Clark on the front of it. But that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts. Who's dumber? Which comment was dumber, McNutts or Pex? I actually thought McNutts was the worst ever, and I think Pex now is worse. Leave a comment. Don't forget, subscribe. Get us to 1,000. Follow us again on, on um, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and on X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now. <laughs>